Welcome back Legionnaires and we're here with another 12-12 AD battle for you. There is a lot of Turks uh, in this battle. We have the Seljuk, uh, Seljuk of Rum over there. We have the Ottoman Empire here with these awesome foot guards who are, are just goddamn deadly. They've got their bows and their swords. Very, very good combination. We've seen it in several other battles, um, including the Battle of Hattin, which I did recently. And these guys, well not the the uh, Ottomans, but I mean these guys were pretty damn good. But they, these two Turk Turkish factions are up against the Almanid uh, Sultanate, which we've not seen yet on the uh, channel, so it'll be good to have a look at them. And they are also up against the, um, is this the Hafizid Sultanate, isn't it? It's not the Marinids, they've got like a red, like, uh, banner or whatever. So yes, yeah, so the Hasfids and the and and the uh, Almanids. So it's like two sort of Spanish and African up against two Turkish. So we'll quickly have a look at the army comps while these uh, guys get set up. So we'll have a look and see what they have to offer today. So the Ottomans have some Askari nobles which are pretty damn uh, elite cavalry. Uh, they'll be pretty medium melee cavalry, very useful. He's also got some shock cavalry, some uh, Sefer cavalry, very very good. This has got some heavy infantry in reserve here, ready to support those cavalry when they go into combat, I imagine. Um, he's also got some more here. He's got some more Seifers. He's got a Noka bodyguards. These guys look pr pretty damn good. He's got some gunners. So this is possibly going to be a huge advantage over uh, the Marinids, not the Marinids, the Hasfids and the uh, and the Almanids. And he's basically, he's got some gun, he's got some gunpowder on the battlefield, that'll be very useful. He's also got some Noka foot guards, these guys I'm on about. They've got swords, see they're apparently a melee uh, unit, but they also have bows. They're very, very deadly. He's got a lot of them. Uh, I mean, they are very expensive, but they are very, very good. He's also got some Martelosos, some like, sort of uh, Greek, uh, sort of conscripts, I guess they are sort of. They're pretty, they're pretty good, they're, they'll hold the line for a little bit. Um, now we're on to the Seljuk of Rum. He's got some. I'm not really know much about what their units are either. Don't really see them often on the channel. They got Ya Ya, some light spear infantry. Ya Ya, wow, very imaginative name. <laughs> we also have some more Noka foot guards. Uh, so clearly they're favouring this fa uh, this unit on this side of the battlefield. Uh, hopefully they pull pull off. And um, we've got some identical. Uh, Heavy infantry, which is no surprise because I mean the Seljuk uh, of Rome and like the Ottomans kind of a sort of a very similar faction. They are both Turkish factions, um, so they will have very similar units. What else do we have? We have some um, some pole arms, which I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. Voy Voynuk, Voynuk, possibly I don't know. More Ascari nobles. We also have some Sifa cavalry. More Ascari nobles, uh, and their general is a Gulen bodyguard. It's a bit different, no. From an Oka bodyguard. Um, I prefer the Ghulams. They look blooming well armored and they're dangerous. But anyway, the two armies are now advancing. We'll have a quick look at what the Almanids have. They have um, some some Martadin, Jun, some Pike infantry basically. They have some heavy shot cav here, which look goddamn awesome. They have some more melee cav. Oh, shot cav actually, back here. The Caliph. Uh, that's the Caliph there, so we need to go for it. Uh, the Turks should be focusing down him. More heavy shot cav. Oh my god, everything's moving forward very quickly now. We have swords. Um, some medium crossbows. I'm not even going to try and pronounce these names. I'll definitely get them wrong. Some frontiersmen here. So they're also like um, the Noka foot guard. They also have bows and... Well, actually, no, they have javis and they have swords. But they are a medium-ranged melee infantry unit. They also have some Moraz Jund. And that's kind of it. They have a lot of mixture. And the Guza in the rear, which seems to be the most elite stuff. Whatever you have at the back is probably the most elite stuff. Um, so more Guza, but these are early. Um, all forming like shield formation. I mean, they look don't look pretty. Like, they don't look that elite, to be honest. Um, they don't look well armored anyway. I mean, they look pretty damn cool. Very pretty with all their headdresses. Put it like that. What else do we have over here? We have some Italian Ulej Billman. They have Italians on their side. Wow, I mean they are in North Africa, so I guess they would be able to access like. But why would the Italians want to fight for um, like Muslims? It's a bit bizarre. I mean they certainly wouldn't have a Muslim banner. So much so that the man's invisible. He's lost his torso. <laughs> How's he lost his torso? Well, 
Unlucky for you, Servage. You're not going to last long in this battle by the looks of it. Uh, Ulej Lancers. So these are more like Italians, I presume. Like an Italian sort of North African mix. We also have some Berber Lancers. Um, and we have some... What are these? Grenadine June. These are like their elite stuff then. Yeah, they look pretty They look pretty good. I mean, they're mele medium melee. No one's got really anything massively like heavy melee. So... That's nothing to really worry about. And then Nazara Al-Rabat, the heavy shock, is the first thing. And anyway, the battle has started and there is uh, some some arrows being loosed. I mean, I don't think there'll be much casualties. Uh, archers are just a way to soften up the enemy. They don't get many kills, unless it's possibly in the siege. If you're shooting into enemy's rear with archers, then you've got a good chance of getting a lot of kills. But not really with uh, anything, not really with the head-on attack. I mean, I don't, there's something going on over here. It looks like... Looks like the uh, Almanis is getting ready for a, a cavalry charge. But this is a poor decision because now they are leaving their pikes well and truly open to archer fire. But they are going to try and catch out um, the cavalry here. But, I mean, it looks like they've got their own medium pole arms in, in position. But, I mean, it doesn't really look like... I mean, they've got all these um, ranged units here, but they can't get them close enough. Because they're only Javi. They, while the uh, Turks have basically got uh, bows and swords. Well, not basically. They have. Oh, these guys look pretty damn cool. Well, these ones are Moraz of Jun. They, yeah, they look pretty cool. They also have crossbows. Ah, we have crossbows on the battlefield. We have some uh, Andalusian heavy crossbows. Ah. These could be pretty good at getting some kills. Crossbows are pretty good at uh, punching through armor. Literally all they're designed for. But, they are uh, leaving themselves open to being just hit. Because they're not like a Pavis one, they're not turning their back. And now they're pulling back. No engagement as of yet. Oh, here we go, that's why they're pulling back. There's Sifa Cavalry coming forward to try and get them. Are they going to commit their charge? They are, it looks like they are. Wow, they're actually going to commit this charge. To Spears? Oh dear, this is a bad move by the Turks. I mean, they initially they've done really well. Actually, they've done very well, to be fair. But wow, they're now in a hailstorm of fire. I don't think they've routed it. Oh, they did actually wave at these guys, but wow. They didn't take many casualties. They've got the entire way through this line. And here we go, another cavalry charge over here. Just missed this one. This is between the Almanids and, uh, and the Turks and the Ottomans. They've also sent in some uh, of their Greek conscript guys, basically support the fight and they've also sent in some uh, of their infantry as well and we're going to be awful with names because these are all really new factions or factions we barely see on the battlefield on the channel usually but the cavalry has been pulled out and it's now turning into just a bit of an infantry brawl here Martelosos are probably going to get beaten by these guys the Guzat so, they, so there we go the Guzat are better it would seem uh, no car foot guards firing at point blank range now against uh, the Guzat the enemy have rallied their units. Oh, wow. Oh, the Berber Lance has got broken. Where did that uh, cavalry unit go that broke the entire way through? I do not know, but there's a huge fight going on out here now. It's all going off. So we'll quickly have a look over here. There's now, like, a fight going on here. Pikes between cavalry. That's never a good sign. Um, it already looks like the swords are now break being broken by these... Uh, well, the swords are breaking these uh, pole arms here. That's not good. So now they're leaving a huge gap now to encircle them. Um, it looks like the Turks are holding their own, but they are going to start losing here against the... I mean, both sides are breaking. The Marcelosos and the Guzat. It's just this far left flank is not yet engaged. And here we go, a little infantry engagement. Very, very good. I'd say the Noka foot guards are probably going to win this. They're just looking at the armor. I mean, these guys are just so well are heavily armed. Yeah, those dudes that don't look like they'll stand much of a chance there. Sol the Seljuk of Rum, though, could really do some support. And it looks like uh, the Ottomans are doing just that. Sending over some Cephas to try and help um, run down some guys. Definitely should go for that general. He's open and on his own. But I don't... As I say that, they just route this uh, swords unit. They are running out of infantry in the main area of the fight. Of the, uh, of the Almanids. Oh, God. Fire arrows trying to break stuff now. But here we go, some Yaya's up against some, uh, what I presume are just some, well, some spears, some Jund of the Almanids. 
And it looks like the Yaya's were victorious. Yes. Ever so slightly. The enemy are after their general. Oh, yes, they are. The I mean, it looks like it's going to be a general versus general fight, but the Al Rabat, he's just like got stuck in combat here. And now the Osman general is going to go in and take advantage of that. He did pretty. O he did okay. He's firing a point blank range with his bows. But here we go. The Noka foot guards look like they're winning. Most of these units are now just like not even really. Well, the far ones not even in combat really. Like it's only got slightly in combat. They should really flank this unit round, possibly. Actually, maybe not. There's still a lot of um, Hasford units to be committed. The main fight is really going to get decided over here on this left flank. Who can win this cavalry engagement? Because most of the cavalry is spent. I mean, I say that, I mean, it looks like the Almanids probably have the carry advantage and the Seljuks look like they're really back in trouble again here. Yeah, not looking good. I mean, this is... They've just broken all this. This Jund is now able to return. They've got like a solid... Yeah, I, there's barely anything left of the Seljuks. It's going to come down to uh, whether the Seljuks can two-team um, the Alm Not the Almanids, the Hasafids with the Ottomans, break these guys, and then whatever remains of them, go on and take the Almanids out. The enemy general is dead. Which one is dead? I'm not sure. I'm gonna say... the Almanid one. Yes. Which is huge, because they just won, so this army now is even weaker. It's already, br it's already like, damaged from fighting initially, and now it's gonna... Um, have morale damage as well from losing its general. And there we go, some heavy infantry going in to support this fight. They'll start cutting down these cavalry in no time. But what have they got left really? They've got some frontiersmen and some goose at high, some pikes. I mean, there's still stuff returning from the Seljuks, but it's not going to be enough to really win that fight, I don't even think, with the morale uh, bonus really. Okay, so now we have an engagement over here now. It looks like the pole arms are going to go in. Italian pole arms are going in. And against Greek conscripts, the Martellosos, in shield formation. Um, I'm not really sure who would win that. But they're going on beyond. Um, and they're kind of having to be forced to turn. Yeah, I don't know if they were meant to engage these Martellosos, but they're now losing men unnecessarily to them. But yeah, the foot guards are winning. I mean, I say that. This goes out high one here. So maybe they're fairly close in quality. Which is surprising because... They're pretty damn elite of those goose out. And the, I mean, anyway, the Seafers have gone in and are helping out now. They're broken most of that stuff. So now the Hasfers having to send in their last few infantry units. Really need to commit this unit. Certainly either shoot with it or they need to do something. They can't just leave it there just to do nothing. And it looks like the cavalry now is engaged. Wow, these guys are breaking already. These are not even really doing anything. And these guys, I mean, they are facing the wrong way. So I guess that's probably why. But it's now a huge cavalry engagement going on over here. This is going to be the deciding back, uh, back try, I have a feeling. Whoever wins this will certainly win the battle. I'm going to say it's probably going to be the Osmans. Actually, I don't know. I can see a lot more Italian sort of like... Hasafid Cavalry. But they're all pretty armoured. they all got similar armour. So it's hard to tell. Yeah, I mean, well, there's a lot more cavalry in there. But they've got sent in their infantry. These heavy infantry. I'm surprised. Well, they're really sending send in this Viscari Nobles now. Surround these guys. Break these guys. But I'd say the Osmans have probably won their battle. And they may win the whole, the whole battle. The Ghulam bodyguards still alive. Yeah, I mean, the the Seljuks are actually making a huge, like, revi we're getting a revival here. I mean, they're pulling back from these pikes, which is smart. But, I mean, they are... They've still got quite a few units. They seem... At one point, it seemed like the, they had nothing. But now, they seem they've got, like, quite a few stuff left. They need to get these ones just to surround the here. I mean, the balance power is massive in their favour. It's about 600 man difference now. Um, the Hasafids are really going to have to take something to break these guys. They're fought. Oh, this is cool. So the uh, we haven't really seen the uh, gunpowder guys in, bat in fighting yet, but they're forming square. I, d I feel like this is long before they they would have ever done it. It's like a Napoleonic style thing. But uh, yeah, they're forming square. I mean, I don't know how good they are in combat. I wouldn't say great, but they got support from the cavalry, so that might even it out. 
I mean, I guess they might be better off when forming square. But, I mean, they're still losing decisively. I mean, they've broken the, uh, those swords. And now it looks like the general is now under threat here. For the, uh, for the Hasfids. He looks very Italian himself. I feel like the Hasfids are just a, a North African Italian faction, really. They, they just, they have a lot of Italian influence. Which makes sense, like I said. They're in, they are basically in, like, Tunisia. The closest spot to, uh, to Italy. But, I mean, it does look like they're losing this battle here. I mean, you can, yeah, I mean, what are you doing here, Crusader? You shouldn't be here. I know you're, like, probably Genoese, but get rid of the cross, and you deserve to die for that, bringing the cross to this battle. This is a, this is a non-Christian fight, if I've seen any. But there we go, it looks like the Turks have won. There's, they've got barely anything left, and the cavalry uh, fight over here didn't actually decide anything. The battle's won elsewhere, and it was a Pyrrhic victory. So we'll end the battle, uh, and we'll look at the results quickly. So this was sent in by uh, Premisil, so thank you very much for him sending it in. Uh, very much appreciated. Always sends in great battle replays. And that was a uh, very, very close one at points. But at the end, it, the Turks came out triumphant. So anyway, we'll have a look at some of the, uh, good, res some of the good scores. I mean, Eskari Nobles here getting 200... Uh, 22 kills. That's very, very good. 222. I mean, this Sifa cavalry unit got 532. That's probably one of the highest, like, kills I've ever seen for any unit in 1212. Very, very good. The gunner's getting 118. Didn't really see much of them on the battlefield. Wasn't really focusing on them. Um, but I can imagine they did get quite a few kills. Probably did cause a lot of breaking. No foot guards getting 316. These guys are pretty damn nasty. They can kill in combat and from, uh, from range. So I'm not surprised they got a lot of kills. And everything else really doing okay. And um, then Martelloso is doing okay. They got a high and a late one. The high ones look nicer, actually. <laughs> Just a slight comment there. Um, and then what else have we got? We've got the Sultan of Rome here getting 265 kills with his general. His Gulum bodyguards were doing very, very well. 387 with his Sifa cavalry. So clearly the Sifas were uh, very, very... Uh, well, they were key in this battle, put it like that. And his uh, pole arms are doing so well. His uh, Yaya is doing very well. Uh, like a, I think these guys were like a light spear unit, but they did excellent. And his heavy infantry did very well, getting 180 and 234. They actually did a lot better than the uh, Ottomans. They only got like 40 and 74. And everything else doing okay, to be fair. So we'll have a look quickly at the Almanid Caliphate. So they got... Uh, well, they've not got anything that really stands out, possibly apart from their cavalry, getting 233 and the Yom getting 164. I mean, they're... Um, um, swordsman getting like 148, it's not bad either. And the Guzak getting 153 uh, uh, is also pretty reasonable as well. Um, so well done to Red Achilles, he did very well holding on for as long as he did. And at one point, I did think he was going to beat the Seljuks. I think if he hadn't lost his general, the Caliph, he may well have done that. Um, so Scorpion King getting. Uh, as his cavalry did pretty well, his Ulej uh, Lancers, his Italians getting 109, his uh, Grenadine uh, Jun getting 143 kills, also a pretty reasonable, but apart from that, his uh, Guzad didn't really do very well, he got beaten back by the Noka uh, foot guards, which is to be expected, it is unfortunate that he had to fight a lot of them, um, and nothing else really performed that great, his, it was a bit unfortunate, he was a bit late to join the battle, he had a lot longer skirmish period, and his archers getting, getting 58 is not bad. But um, it just show, and 64, it's, uh, it just show. So uh, Anyway, but well done to him. He held out the longest in the end um, out of the two armies. But it was uh, not to be for the, uh, for the North African and uh, Spanish units. But anyway, guys, if you enjoyed that battle and want to see more 1212 uh, battles or just more uh, battles anyway on the channel, then please do leave a like, comment, on, and subscribe. I do appreciate all the support. And until next time, Legionnaires, bye for now.